We still are your election headquarters. And of course, we switch from the NDC camp now to the MPP camp. You've heard about the neck of uh, the NPP and everything else that has been done from yesterday, the party's headquarters, all the way till today. Well, joining us for a conversation now, a tricky constituency, Yendi. And uh, we have the member of parliament, Farouk Aliou Mahama. Mr. Mahama, a very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, my brother. How are you? Uh, I just lost a little bit of what you said. So good morning. How are you? And good morning to your listeners. Right. Um, by God's grace, we could be better, but we are well. Uh, I yeah. hope you are well too. Happy New Year. Same to you. And um, uh, it's just that it's been a while I've touched base with my brother. So forgive me. I'll, I'll <laughs> You've, it has been a while, but I guess that conversation yes. we'll have uh, later on. Tell me, yes. Yendi. Yendi is an interesting... Uh, constituency, it has swung over time, of course, in, in the first instance in 1992, we didn't have all of this, there was no competition. But since then, it's been pretty dicey. The NDC has had a foothold there, and now you've taken it over. Uh, what would you say accounts for your success in Yendi? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'm an indigen of Yendi. Uh, my grandfather was the Zongona of my, my, my paternal grandfather, was the Zongona of Yendi. Um, and my late father, Alaji Ali Umam, was the first Muslim and Dagomba vice president to have come from Yendi. So obviously, since my childhood days, I was always with my father coming to Yendi. And after the demise of my father and the contribution of my father and my forebearers in this party, I thought it wise that I could not let my late father's legacy die. And that is how come I abandoned my profession as a procurement expert at Ghana Kuku Board to come and take Yendi to the promised land. And indeed, you can measure me and my performance, even proud to become a member of parliament, what I've been able to do for the people vis-a-vis -vis now the current member of parliament. I have shown commitment. Uh, I've looked at the needs assessment of the people, having known what the people want and the expectation of the people. So I've demonstrated actual uh, commitment and responsibility as somebody who wants to be a member of parliament, even before I became a member of parliament, by acquisition of a fish for the Yendi Mortuary, uh, uh, boreholes, uh, farmers' intervention, school fees, helping people with their uh, needed support, uh, the agriculture side, the health side, the education side, and all that, even before. And that showed the, the commitment and the love that people had for me. And that is how come, for the first time, I wanted to make your, your checks. I'm the first MP in the fourth public to have been uh, won with 41,000. And I'm the first MP in the fourth republic who has gotten more votes than the MPP presidential candidate in the fourth republic. I had votes more than the president and I do not go for it. And it tells you that I have absolute control and absolute responsibility and trust on the good blogging because, and also I'm the MP in the fourth republic to have won with the highest numbers of votes, 16,000 votes among all the 18 constituencies in the region. That tells you that the trust levels and the approval levels of Farouk Ali Mama is something that transcends within the constituency. Two things I want to say from all that you've shared. One, someone else, I always like at lo looking at matters from different angles. Someone will also say, okay, so you got this mass of votes, but that was also because you did not do enough campaigning or enough work for the president. And that, that means you failed in a certain way. You, you won for yourself, but you could have helped the president uh, do better. There's also been this talk that, listen, Farouk Ali Mahama is making the strides he is because his father is a former vice president of the country. How do you react to these two points? No, I mean, yes, I, I'm privileged to have been a son of a former vice president, but my late father growing up didn't give us that opportunity. One is we, when he was leader and before he became MP, as he became vice president, my dad never gave us the school, the, the opportunity to have things easy. And I can tell you that today I'm a responsible person. And I've been able to achieve all these accolades due to the hardness my dad put in me. I'm one of the children of my late father who didn't have it easy with my late father because he always wanted me to respond. And I'm happy, but it's unfortunate that he's not alive to see what I've been able to achieve. And I have done things. I'm a self-made man because I've been able to. I don't think my late father was an MP before he became vice president. I don't think my late father had an experience of working in Ghana Cuckoo Board for over 12 years to have risen to the position of a manager in Ghana Cuckoo Board and also do things aside in the name of my father and also try to build my own path. And I think that having assessed myself in the last 10 years, I've seen that, uh, yes, I'm privileged to have been a sort of a former vice president, but I've carried myself well and I've led uh, the, 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 the legacy of my late father 
and my grandfather, Moe Gala, who was Ghana's trade minister and Ghana's foreign minister. I've been able to leave a legacy worth emulating as a son. I see. Now, when you look at Yendi, like I said, it's been pretty interesting in terms of the parliamentary performance. You would notice that for the presidential, uh, since 1996, the MPP uh, has, has been a force to reckon with. And 61% uh, in, in 1996, 51% in 2000, I'm talking about the presidential. Then in 2004, 55%, 2008, 52, 2012, 55%. It's always been pretty good. For the NDC, uh, of course, the reverse of that, 36%, 40%, in the 40% range. But then in 2008, the NDC took the seat. And then we also know that there was also that uh, contest before you took over where the NDC was in, in power. It would appear that this is one of the, the MPP's strong constituencies of up north. Of Very course. strong MPP of constituency. Course. Yes, it's a traditional seat. And the only seat is the seat that when you win, we have a president. And I can tell you in 2020, when I won, we, we, were, we, we were able to have a president in MPP. And inshallah, my, my 27th of April, I'm going to emerge as the, the most a populous MP in the constituency, but the delegates are going to give an overwhelming endorsement. And inshallah, it will transcend into the victory of the first Muslim president in Ghana, that is Dr. Mahmoud Bauma. You can be rest assured of that. Right. But then you have other people who also want to take you on. How do you feel about that? I, I've, been, um, I, I've been born into politics. MPP is a party that is full of competition, and I was born into MPP, and I'm always available and ready for competition. And a party that doesn't go to competition, or that, but it should be a healthy competition, it's a competition of ideas, competition of evidence-based projects that you have done, reasons why you've been a member of parliament, reasons why you've been chosen to be in the plenary of chamber to be able to work. And as a first time, I have carried myself well, having won with the largest vote in the northern region, having been able to bring MPP from 3,000 votes difference to 16,000 votes difference, and having been in the chamber to perform my functions as a member of parliament, asking critical questions, the new Yendi city, the new Yendi city dream, three years ago, four years ago, Yendi where it was and where we are today, and being the first member of parliament to have been a chairman, a first time member of parliament, to be a chairman of a government assurance committee, vis-a-vis -vis become the chairman of the Muslim caucus in parliament. Obviously, there's some leadership traits that I have that I believe that the people of Yendi have observed and tested my leadership. And obviously, I'm ready for any competition. I'm competing with my sister, the CEO of Maslow, but I have the ground because it's my work that I've shown and nobody would like to change a winning team. You can never have a member of parliament who has brought a party from 3,000 votes to 16,000 votes, even having votes more than the president, and you want to change a winning team. I don't think the delegates are ready for that. It's four more Farouk Ali Muhammad, four more based on my consistent visit, four more for the research that has been done that has been the most visible MP in the Northern region, four more for to show that I have shown commitment to the road sector, education sector, health sector, the human development. Just yesterday, I gave scholarship to 150 students in Yendi. I spent over 200,000 to give them scholarship. The evidences of my leadership and what I've shown and what I should maintain is evidence for the people to know. And I can assure you that on the 20th of seven of, of, of in seven days' time, I'll be the, the, the continuing member of parliament and four more for me. And inshallah, I'll defeat my, candidate, my opponent in that election. Now, looking at the voting pattern when it comes to the delegates in, in 2020, what got you to parliament? I mean, to contest for the MPP in that race. You polled 244 votes. Then there was Abibata Shani Mahama Zakaria with 210. And then uh, 139 votes uh, for Baba Daini, a chartered accountant. When you look at these, uh, with over 349 votes that went to other contestants, uh, it tells you that you are not home and dry. What have you done since that time to solidify or cement your position? Okay, first of all, what the data and the numbers that we used to vote in 2020 differs now. We've brought in almost 120 polling stations. And we've brought in almost... So you've added on to these numbers? Yes, and we have 785 um, new polling station executives. So what transpired in 2020 cannot be the same that will transpire in 2024. And obviously... There have been old guards who have been changed in the police station register. There are new entrants. 
And um, I don't think that all those who were there, who most of them were, they are going to be polling station executive at this time. And it's a two horse race. And I can tell you that most of the new police station executives who were uh, brought in are going to be loyalists of the uh, MP. And I can assure you that uh, we would get over 500 votes in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the parliamentary elections because 500 that voted in 2020 is different from 789, and there have been new and newcomers in the album and the new register. So we cannot use that analysis to be uh, the final determinant. But all in all, I think if 41,000 people have believed in me and voted massively for me based on my track record, based on what I've done, based on moving Yendi to asphalt roads, to inner roads, to hospitals, to healthcare, to agric infrastructure, to student support, and to the new Yendi city dream, which is now manifesting. The Yendi dream is manifesting, and four years is not enough. My vision is to see Yendi in the next 10 years being placed as the traditional capital of Tabo. We need to have an evidence-based election, and that is what I'm, is my trump card, and that's what's going to lead me to victory come December 27th. And generally, some also allege that quite a number of favors have been done you, apart from your lineage being uh, of the stock of a former vice president. Mohammed Habib Tijani, for very curious reasons, in, in the last election decided not to contest, which, which brought you up. Um, why do you think that is? I'm just curious. What yes, do you I mean, know? Uh, I would have to give respect to all my former predecessors from. Uh, Shani Mahama to Alasa Malik Yakubu, my uncle, Dr. Um, 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 Alaji Habib Tijan, have all performed well for Yendi. Uh, but you see, the energy which I came with, with before I became a member of parliament, I had demonstrated four years, clear years of leadership traits that is in me and to show that I can lead the people. And obviously, the energy that I brought in Honorable Habib Tijan saw and tested the waters and did his own research to know that my emergence as even as somebody who wants to be a member of parliament would cause a lot of um, um, uh, dissatisfaction for him. So obviously he gently uh, accepted. And I believe that we have that for that reason. You're, you're telling me that an incumbent um, who could have still stood, I mean, he could have decided to go and as we no, see in your they, party, so they, many, so many of they, them are challenged, yet they go. Some of them win, some of them lose. I mean... They, uh, it wasn't as though it were high and dry. He didn't know what the results would be, but he stepped aside. Yes, yes, yeah. But I respect his decision for not uh, contesting, and we've gone past that. And I'm now the new, the current member of parliament. And no MP in the ND has ever gone for one term in the ND constituency. And I have performed better than all my previous ministers in terms of numbers. If you look at the data, I'm the first MP to have beaten a, 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 a flag bearer. I'm the first MP to have won with more than 10,000 votes, 16,000. Habib Tijani won with 3,000 votes. I came with 16,000. And I'm looking to a 20 to 22,000 vote difference in 2024 for Dr. Mahmoud Dawdia. So it tells you that there's obviously that approval rate. And you can do your own background check to know my visibility every weekend, funerals, commitment to the people, all the needed infrastructure, all the roads, due to the support of the president and the vice president, I've been able to do a lot for you. And trust me, I'll invite you to come and join me in my drive around town to see how you need And I'll invite you to come and have some good shows. At me. As being a friend who I've not been mm -hmm. in touch for a while, I would invite you to you to come and enjoy yourself after my victory. Well, um, that is something that I would look forward to. But uh, I, I just have to find out, usually when members of parliament speak about these, how do you, fi how do you fund all of this um, visibility? so to speak. Because I know if you're at the funerals, if you're at the outdoorings, if you're at all of these, something must happen. How do you fund all of that? Thank you very much. I mean, before I became a member of parliament, um, I, I've been in, into my business before I inherited my father's business. I've been the other son of my late father. There's a lot of business he left behind for me and my siblings. And having got a network of my father's friends across the country, across the African countries, Nigeria, and all that. And there are a lot of my father's cronies, especially in Nigeria and other countries in the world, who believe in the legacy of my late father and believe that I'm the true representation of the late Ali Umama's family. So obviously the support comes and friends and family, businessmen who believe in me. And my brother, that is what is making me survive because I'm not a minister, nor a deputy minister. Okay, now, now tell me, um, looking at how the MPP has fared, okay, economically, on different fronts. Uh, a lot of people, I'm sure you go out there, even your constituents, I'm sure some of them will have some levels of dissatisfaction. 
What do you make of the performance of the MPP? In recent times, I spoke to two very prominent people. I've forgotten whether it was, I, I don't want to hazard a guess, but academics, very important people. And um, they were giving scores like three over 10, four over 10. I remember speaking to Dr. Kwame Asa Asante, uh, political scientist at the University of Ghana, director of the Center for European Affairs. I think he scored government three or four maximum out of 10. That is one. How do you feel this administration has fared? And how do you think that will also claw away at your votes? Because sometimes in punishing an administration, the MP is also punished. Um, what are your reactions? Thank you very much. First of all, we have to appreciate the work since the president and our incoming president, Dr. Baumi, has done for the good people of this country. First of all, the president took over. We all knew the records of the country. And the, the president of Kufaro took over. And having been a president, I think that the president, to, to, I will raise the president seven over 10. The president has not been able to achieve all, but he has done maximum satisfaction to the good people of this country. Obviously, you cannot satisfy all. But if you come to the education sector, for instance, which is very, very critical, I always take education as my priority as a member of parliament. For instance, having looked at where my late father came from, uh, the son of a cocoa seller, my grandmother was a cocoa seller. It was this education that took my father from Yendi to become a vice president. Obviously, as a member of parliament, I look at a peasant farm's son, a, a poor man's son, who doesn't have that money to contribute to himself. And President Abufado came in with a vice president and made sure that they brought in this free education, which is very, very critical. And has taken huge sums of money from the expectations of parents in their pockets in terms of expenditure. The infrastructure, the STEM development, the new innovations they brought in the education sector. And when you also come to the digitization sector, the innovative vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, looking at how the Ghana card has played a critical role, looking at the digitization, our digital address system, it has made things in the banking sector, the, the, the money, um, money of probability and all that. You also come to the economy. The economy started on a very good note, but obviously, due to the COVID issues, we had to have this challenge. But I can speak as we speak. If you look at inflation rates, the vice president, since he took over as the, the flag bearer, the leader of our party, has shown commitment that the, the future looks bright. The economy is bouncing back. The president is at a, a, a NAM conference now with a, with a finance minister. All in all, I think that there's a new hope. And I don't think that the approval rating would affect our party. The vice president's approval rating, the party's approval rating, is over 50% in terms of what we think. And I don't think that is a few. You say it's over 50%. In terms of what? Performance. I mean, I, I rated the government seven over ten, but I'm saying that, for instance, the elections, the approval rating for our elections, we are above the fifty percent mark uh, in terms of what the vice president is bringing. You know, he's here to pro provide his own vision uh, as a new leader of the party. I know the vice president is very innovative. Now that he's, he's going to be his own man, he's going to make sure that he's the leader. He will definitely bring in something that is going to be far different from what our president has done, even though our right. president has performed better. And the vice president, let's give him some time for him from next month to come out with his team. The plan is being on board. And I can tell you, the vice president's approval rating and people making sure that now that he's the leader and he's in charge, he will obviously bring some approval rating back to the party. And I can tell you that we are breaking the eight. Out for Yendi is going to be a dandy for the new patriotic party. Your mama will lose terribly in Yendi. It's going to be across all the northern sectors of, 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 of the region. The Ashanti region will come in, Great Accra will come in. And I can tell you that, my brother, let's, within nine months, you will see it clear. But for now, I'm telling you that we are on course to victory. Within nine months, course. okay, right, uh, to, to the elections, right. Uh, let me just find out my very final bit to you. I want a quick answer. Uh, a running mate for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, what do you make of it? Do you have any, any people in mind? Do you think it should go from any region? Uh, what's your quick take on that? 30 seconds. First of all, I was very, very young when I, my late father went through the process of selection. I know MPP is a party that always takes its time from, uh, from, from other presidents, president uh, who have come in. A vice president position must bring somebody who is somebody who will bring an addition to the party. And my late father was someone who brought a lot of votes to the, to the president. And it's a normal ritual. As, as a next member the National Council, we're part of the meeting. But I know the uh, vice Mr. president... Mr. Aliou Mahama, I know about the processes. I'm not asking for the processes. I'm asking you, from where you sit, where do you think? Do you think, some have said, the, the candidate it's or the running mate should come from the Ashanti... Obviously, what, what, what do you Ashanti, think? It, but yeah, it's obviously going to the Ashanti region. I know very well that it's going to the Ashanti region. That is what I, I'm not sure. I can see my senior brother, Dr. Napo, uh, name coming up strongly. 
and uh, the other names, but it's Napo's name that is making a lot of stir. Not only um, in the in the in the in the in the, the Ashanti region, but in the North region, he's, uh, he has a lot of liking and the, the Yana and a lot of people. Right. So the decision to choose a running mate lies in the hands of the president, and okay. I don't think that uh, I should be in a position. You mean the flag bearer? The, yes, the flag bearer. But I, right. I, I wish to get somebody who is acceptable and who helps the people. And okay. Would, would bring numbers to us, and inshallah, it will be a stronger person who will bring us the votes here. Yeah. All right, Mr. Mama, thank you for engaging us uh, this morning. We wish you the very best in uh, Yendi. That is the.